Hello everyone, I'm Tony Southcott. And I'm Kmet. And welcome to the Gorehounds Playground here in Fort Collins, Colorado. This is Booze and Booze, where we pair different alcoholic drinks with our reviews of horror movies. Today we're going to be talking about Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. This is directed by Scott Glosserman, starring Nathan Bale, Angela Gothel, and has some really cool cameos from Robert England and Scott Wilson. Now we're going to go to the Gorehounds Kitchen where I'm going to show you this week's drink. Hi there and welcome. Today we are filming our drink portion in Gorehounds today, something a little bit different, and I'm going to be making the apple press. For those of you who have seen the movie, it will make a bit of sense. For those who haven't, it will make sense after you watch the movie. This one's pretty straightforward, so what we're going to start off by doing is adding a handful of cranberries to our uh, cup right there, and then I'm going to take my muddler and I'm going to muddle them right in the glass. And it's okay if we have all that, that guts and stuff in there. And then after that, I'm going to grab a piece of apple and I am going to press it into here. Okay. We're going to add a slice of lemon and then I'm going to put some ice in here. Add some hard cider. And then I'm going to top off with some ginger beer. And there you have it, the apple press. You have no idea how much cardio I have to do. It's ridiculous. There's that whole thing of making it look like you're walking. Everybody else is running their ass off. <laughs> everybody thinks we just wake up one morning and start obsessing about a girl and start stalking her, killing everybody that gets in the way. That does seem to happen a lot with you guys. <laughs> That's sure you're getting this. Oh! Oh, start up. You have to tell me. What happens to me? Well, we just finished up with Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, and I've seen this one before, and I've always thought that this was an exceedingly fun movie. I don't know if it's horror, really. It's very deconstructionist. What did you think of it? I liked it a lot. It's all along the same line, along the same lines as cabin in the woods for me yeah which is i think maybe they saw this because i think this is older than cabin in the woods it i'm not 100 sure i know that we reviewed it very early on the human echoes podcast okay like probably in 2012 or something yeah. like that so um it's along the same lines as cabin in the woods where it's kind of cheesy kind of campy um they're making fun of themselves a lot but it was a good movie if you like slashers if you like horror movies, if you've seen a lot, watch this movie. Yeah. Because it, it's it breaks everything down geniusly. Yeah. You will never be able to watch a slasher movie never. again without thinking of this movie <laughs> because again. of how it's built. Like we we were talking about this a little bit before. She's like, You've said that before. Yeah, I like, <laughs> said it in the, during our reviews or even when we've been talking about horror movies, he's said the lines that were in this movie and I had no idea. Yeah, like this movie actually informed a lot about how I've looked at at different horror tropes and it that's what you're saying with cabin in the woods is yeah. like it follows like this is why it's set up this way this is why they're separating this is why they're doing this mm -hmm. the, like all these different things and it's a super cheap version of cabin in the woods keep it that is. in mind it's i don't think it was actually done by kids in grad school the main people in this were claiming to be kids from grad school doing a documentary it is filmed sort of lost like found footage documentary style but it's a little more documentary style because it's a lot of different cameras uh, at the beginning but then it actually turns into an actual type movie mm -hmm. which i thought was a really interesting and different way of doing it i've never seen it that way before i've seen where they either stick from one median or the other um that being said, it was still really well done, I think. Um, the characters are believable. You kind of start liking the serial killer. It's just, it's yeah, bizarre. They, they definitely picked somebody for Leslie Vernon that had a lot of charm to him. Mm -hmm. And you can feel his excitement over how well these things are going. And you can tell that they're sort of glossing over the fact of, like, he's getting ready to murder people. Yeah. And... 
it becomes very real for the documentary crew at a certain point. But it, it's it's awesome how it builds up to that because they're just following a really weird eccentric guy at first who's like saying he accidentally is probably going to kill his turtle someday and like you're not really taking him that seriously and then you see some of the things that put him in action and he gets a lot more sinister and also still charming on top of all that and if, even though this movie wasn't I scary I don't think because no, I ask those questions every time did it scare me would I watch it again did I like it uh, it did not scare me, but I think any horror movie lover has to watch it. I did not think that this movie was going to switch from documentary to movie. I didn't think that was going to happen. So when you kind of see, you're like, well, things aren't going the way that it's supposed to be going, and they switch over, I was like, oh, damn. And I got to say, this had me laughing more than most, like, comedy movies. Yeah, like there there were a lot of times where it's it's actually laugh out loud moments. Yeah, I was laughing like hard, 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 hard. And it's it's just a cool fun concept different. for a movie. It, it's definitely different. Like I it doesn't have A-list actors by mm. any means. It has Robert England being awesome. It has Zelda, I can't remember her last name from Poltergeist being really like fun for a moment. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just it's well constructed. It's funny, not scary at all. Like no. this doesn't even have like a jump scare moment in it. Mm -mm. But it is so much fun to watch, and I think that anybody who's a fan of horror and likes it. that comedy crossover that happens sometimes, like, would definitely do well yeah, with it. Especially if you liked Cabin in the Woods, which I thoroughly enjoyed Cabin in the Woods. A lot of people did not. I, but I don't know very many people that didn't like. I like, but I also in these circles. I know a couple people. of people who are kind of snooty with their horror movies. I'm like, a, if it entertains me and is scary, like I kind of like it. Yeah. I don't. I'm not really. Well, but I, I think some people were a little bit offended by it because it's simultaneously a love letter to horror and a massive yeah, criticism of horror. It is. Because like the gods at the end are the audience basically rejecting anything that doesn't follow the same formula. Mm -hmm. And so like this movie kind of has elements of that. We should watch that movie again. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> should watch it. I, like, I love that movie. But back to the movie that we're talking about. Uh, it was a short watch. I did not get bored with it. The characters made it um, kind of fun and it kept the story going going quite thoroughly. Uh, I gotta say, the person who shined was, um, his name is Nathan Basil, and he played Leslie. He did a great job. Yeah, I haven't looked to see if he's been anything in anything else. I'm sure he's been around, but I need to check it out after this to see what other movies he's done, because he did a great job mm -hmm. in this. Oh, I do also like that um, they made Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, um, Freddy Krueger, Chucky. They made all those things canon. Yeah, like it was official cool. canon. And they explained that Freddy Krueger was basically a mass hallucination, that it's just a normal killer who everybody thinks kills people in dreams and things like really? that. Really? Yeah, I, I see. I think I missed that part. But... Uh, that was in the beginning whenever we were messing with oh, volume yeah. settings we and stuff like that. Like we were trying to get uh, subtitles to show up. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I really enjoyed that. I don't think there's a lot of uh, horror movies that are make other horror movies canon. And so I was kind of really excited to see that that, in fact, was real in this universe. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a movie that just makes me happy to see. And I'm glad that I was able to come back to it after a while because it's been it's been since 2012, 2013 since I've had a chance to see it. And I think I enjoyed it just as much I this time. Say I was going to second know, view was good. Yeah, I didn't know the term was coming. Like, I... I was worried that that was going to bug you. I was worried that, like, this was going to be too campy. I was worried mm -hmm. that it wasn't going to quite work for you. Yeah. And then, like, about ten minutes in, you're like, is it supposed to be this campy? But you were laughing at it. I was yeah. Like, I think this will probably work. <laughs> yeah. I, if, if things are trying to be campy, I love it. If it's not trying to be campy and it is campy and they're trying to take themselves seriously, I really dislike yeah, it. It's, it's like sometimes it's perfect and sometimes it's too cringe. It's like the room trying to be a serious drama that turns into an unintentional comedy sometimes yeah. it works oh yeah other yeah. times it does not if they're like if you're if you're aiming for camp and you know your audience and you pull it off well and just take it very light you can do a good job yeah yeah and so um 
I enjoyed this quite thoroughly. I think I'd watch it again, but probably not anytime soon. I'd watch it with another person yeah. that hadn't seen it before. I would definitely do that. Um, obviously, it didn't scare me, but I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, it's not on any streaming that I know of right now. I, I, I wonder if it might always be on Stars because they help produce it, so okay. it might be worth it there. We were able to rent it because Gorehounds has everything. I uh, and I don't know. Like this is this is a movie that you can tell it's low budget. You can tell that it's not perfect, but they had just enough to give it some heart and make it so that it's a very fun watch. And it was cool seeing Robert England get to be like the the Ahab and <laughs> the some, good guy. Which yeah, is funny. Like <laughs> it was. It was just. It was a cool movie. So I I told you what we should call the drink before this. Yeah. So I I came up with the drink that we we put on this, but before I'd obviously seen the movie. And he was like, oh, there's just something interesting with an apple press, which was very short, but I still kind of love our drink that went with it. I think it's perfect. It it definitely fit with this particular thing, and it's a good fall thing because it's cider and all Mm -hmm. that. But it was, I was trying to think of something that's like, I can't think of a a Sith drink. Mm Mm-mm. Or a scythe, not a Sith. That's a Star Wars thing. Um, <laughs> like, uh, so, like, you went into this. You didn't, like, you had a drink. The only thing you knew was something was going to happen press. with an apple press. Which I figured when, at the very beginning, he talked about living on an apple orchard. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, then it makes sense that something's going to happen with a hand or yeah. a head or something in, in an apple press and that's and it, exactly what yeah, happened. Yeah, it didn't disappoint. No, nope, it did not disappoint, which and um, I I like how they gave a human element to the uh, like paranormal killer that doesn't really happen in slasher movies. Yeah, like uh, they, they were talking so much about how it's like all preparation to yeah. make it seem that way. Because like <laughs> Whenever he's showing how you set up these murders, that's probably one of the coolest parts it because was really it's like, cool. all right, so I'm going to climb out of the shadows here and you're going to pull the brick and mm-hmm. we're just going to like set this up and make it feel like it's paranormal. So. Or, or ever like just making fun of other horror movies when they're like, what about what if they just smash the window? And he's like, they never. They, they never, never seem to do that. And if they do, it's always just from the second story. And it's just like, that is so true. That happens time and time again. Like, I, I feel like I. I feel like Scott's, what is it, Grossman? Uh, Glosserman. Glosserman. Like, I feel like whatever he and his writing partner and, like, they ended up directing it to put this movie together, they probably watched, like, 50 <laughs> different <laughs> slashes and were just like, check, mark, check, mark, no, check, mark. No, they we never seem to do that. And, just... and there is a lot of really funny one-liners in here that were that were just really, really good. Please, please, please watch this movie yes. and tell us what you think of it because it is it is good. Yes, very much so. And uh, be sure to check your cardio. Yeah. But before you do that, <laughs> go to patreon.com slash human echoes and become a member over there. Or just hit that sub button, tell your friends about us. Check out our stuff at Human Echoes on pretty much all platforms. And we will see you guys soon with more booze and booze.